Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're going to be finding out what happened with the bread situation. I keep seeing all the, uh, in the comments all the time. I keep seeing, you know, replies to different videos that I've done talking about how U.S. bread is terrible compared to other countries. I found out that, like, Germany has, I guess, like uh, 3,000, you know, different kinds of bread. So I'm curious what happened to the bread here. So I found this video right here by Johnny Harris called How the U.S. Ruined Bread. Right. So it should give us the, the answers we're looking for, guys. So links to the original video will be in the description section down below. So make sure you go check that out. And as always, make sure you go give the original channel a like. And uh, let's check this out. How did the U.S. ruin bread? I love bread. There is so much good bread in France. And although man doth not live by bread alone, without it, the meal seems incomplete. Yeah. On every corner, there is a bakery that is pumping out delicious, fresh, well-made bread. It's so fresh. This is not easily available to me, and I want to know why. Why is it that the bread that I can get easily looks very, very different? Why is it that the U.S. sucks at making bread? In fact, let me just show you what that looks like. Okay, wait, it's 12 hours earlier, uh, still back in the U.S. I'm, I'm actually at a grocery store right now. Yep, that's what this we get. This is how a lot of us Americans get our bread. This is what I, right here. I love Whoops. Where's it at, the Sunbeam? Yeah, Sunbeam sandwich bread that's what it the label looks different though this is a i don't know i don't know why the label's a little different maybe he's in, not in america but sunbeam that's what we get most of the time wonder bread's not bad too in all reality it makes a good ham sandwich you know some ham sliced lunch meat with some cheese throw it on there it's already sliced it's not bad it's not your typical european style rustic bread that you're used to though for sure this is how a lot of us Americans get our bread. Yeah. Sigh. My favorite part is when they make this plastic look like it's steaming. It's just like foggy plastic. Yeah, to yeah. be like, this was just baked right now. And it's like, no, this was actually baked like three weeks ago in a factory Plastic. in like Connecticut. It's even made with real butter. <laughs> Always buy Wonder Bread. Yeah, Wonder Bread's not bad. The reason I'm purchasing this bread is because I want to bring it with me to, to France. Just to like have an example lesson. And I may use it as a pillow because it's literally as soft as a Nova Foam pillow. That is one thing about American bread, guys. Maybe, I mean, you, don't, you, you probably don't get it because you're not here. You're not eating American bread. And it's certainly not anything as good as like, you know, your 3,000 different kinds of bread you get in Germany. But there's a place for it. It's good bread. I've grown up with it, right? It's super soft. It's super fluffy. It's not bad at all. Not saying I would take this over, you know, authentic style bread, but it's not bad. And if you haven't tried it, it's, it's good. It, it is. Some of this bagged bread is made with ingredients that are literally illegal in the EU. Now, I didn't say it was healthy. I didn't say it was healthy for you, but it is... It, it doesn't taste bad at all. Back to France, let's do it. There's nothing more American than Wonder Bread. Sunbeam and Wonder Bread. I'm going to France. I wanna go to France? One of these days I will. Wee oui, wee. Oui. In case you're wondering, yes, any video from Paris must include music like this. Nice, <laughs> gentle, yes. cafe, accordion music. There's my composer Tom making it. What right kind of music? Now. Gentle cafe accordion music. There's yeah. my composer Tom making it right now. It's pretty cool. It's just so good. Okay. I love that style of music too. It's nice. Okay, so yeah, we know that France is good at bread and the US sucks at it. Is this just another video where I shit on the USA for being terrible at certain things? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. It's exactly what it is. But hear me out. Yes. I like this dude. Now, I actually have something to say here. I believe that bread is a really important symbol for a bigger cultural phenomenon in the US. And that's what I wanna talk about today. Where industrialized bread came from, why it exists, and how some people are trying to change it. I'll get to that explanation, but first I'm gonna go into that bakery over there 
and buy myself a large ball of butter and flour stuffed with chocolate. Oh, and Tom, can you throw in a beat okay. to this accordion music, please? Yeah. Thanks. Any questions? Um, yes. Are you going to finish that croissant? That sounds cool. Oh, yeah. Pause. My job is to make videos for you. Oh, yeah. I seen this earlier when I was skipping through. We'll skip through a sponsor, big guys. Don't skip through mine, though. Thank you better help for supporting this channel and the journalism that I do. Let's dive back into the video. Okay, so why bread? There's a million other things I could talk I always go through and make sure my audio level's right before I do the video, and I seen that. I'm like, okay, let me, let me time it. That way we can get past that point during the video, because it's like a minute and a half long. Talk about that you're better in other parts of the world. But it turns out that bread is the most important prepared food that humans have ever made, and therefore it is worth talking about. So it is let me explain in under a minute the overview of the tens of thousands of years of history of bread and its chemistry and why it's so important. Don't think I can do it in under a minute? Check this out. 12,000 years ago, humans realized that they could plant this grass instead of just foraging for it. This grass was called wheat, and when it was ground up with a stone, it made this powder that, if you put water with it, creates this stretchy, goopy thing that has a bunch of sugar from the flour that's been released. Oh look, wow. all the bacteria in the air love this sugary goop, nice. and they descend to feast on it, burping <laughs> out gas as they eat. Whoa, the gas can't float up into the air because it's getting trapped in this stretchy ball of goop, like a balloon, like a pillow, like magic. Magic. All this feasting and burping is making it rise and turn into a pillowy thing that is way bigger than it was. Put this blob next to some fire and all of the little bubbles that were just created turn hard. Wait, all of this can happen because of this one grass? Yes. Cool. Wow. And who actually, like, who went, how... I'm always curious, like, how does the process go down? Like, does somebody just get bored thousands of years ago and they're like, well, I wonder what happens if we do this? And then after they do that, well, I wonder what happens if we do this to it now? Like, how does this stuff even happen? Cool, let's plant a lot more of this grass and build all of human civilization off of it, said humans. Society. So that is bread, like the oldest and most important prepared food item that humans have ever invented. Eventually, humans got really good at bacon. Bacon is pretty important and delicious too, guys. Item that humans have ever invented. Eventually, well, we humans got really good at doing this bread, flour, water, yeast thing. And especially here in France, they took it really seriously and have created a whole culture around making bread delicious and amazing. And you can see that they've continued that culture today. Just and Germany, too, because I'm assuming they have the same similar styles of bread because Germany evidently has over 3,000 styles of bread, 3,000 different kinds, which is an insane amount to me. So I'm assuming it's the same. I mean, 3,000 seems like that's about it, right? Can you really make any more bread than that? Like 3,000 different kinds? That's, you know, so there's probably some crossover. I'm assuming there's a lot of similarities in the bread in France and some German bread. Um, I don't know. I'm not a breadologist or you know, any sort of bread expert by any means. But uh, if you are, let me know down below and hit like while you're down there and subscribe. That would be great. Bread, delicious and amazing. And you can see that they've continued that culture today just by the number of bakeries that exist in this city. There are 30,000 independent bakeries in France. That's a lot of bakeries. He said in this city, but then he said 30,000 in France. So... Across the whole country, yeah, 30,000. I wonder how many is in Paris itself. Compare that to the 3,000 that are in the United States. And then remember that the wow. U.S. has like a much larger population. And if you do all the math, wow. you see that France has 50 times more bakeries per capita than the United States. Wow. 50 times. I mean, that is such a clear indication of how much they value good bread that is baked a certain way. Oh, I love some good. I love some good bread. You just don't get it much here. And when you do go to the store, they have like, you know, maybe six or seven different varieties of supposedly fresh baked bread. I don't know how fresh baked it is. It's, it's certainly better than the, the, the Wonder Bread sliced bread that you get. But, uh, you know, six, seven different varieties, 10 if you go to the right place, you know, you don't get no 3,000. No, that's, that's for sure. I'm with Mr. Local over here. Yeah. Yeah. Local French food in France. Yes. 94% of Parisians live less than five minutes away from a bakery. And that's that a shows you 
they care. They care. Yeah. It's like you, you you hear stuff like that and you're like, uh huh. That, uh, th this is their priority. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And the culture of, of eating is just as much important here as how like oh, the wow. ingredients are sourced and prepared and whatnot. Yeah. People don't eat while rushing towards their next meeting or whatever. Like it's very much no. You sit down. You make it a thing. It's just nice. a part of the way of life here. Yeah. Nice. Just nice, laid back and chill. I like it. Yeah. People come into the boulangeries almost on a daily basis and they check in with each other. It's like, uh, hey, how you doing? You know, I'm doing great. This is what's happening. Why, 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 why? That is the question. Why are these bread cultures so different? And the answer comes down to what America was founded on. I mean, a reminder that America is a country founded by a bunch of people who left their country to go make a new life, to do things differently, to do things more individualistically. And the way that expressed itself for a really long time was mechanization, industrialization. And to be clear in the history, Britain was as much to blame for all of this mechanizing of bread as America was. Yeah, I was, I was going to say Britain had a huge, huge part in the Industrial Revolution and all that stuff. That's insulting! But anyway, we're talking about the USA for a little bit. So by the 1920s, you had this machine that was invented, an automatic bread slicer. Hello, convenience, innovation, nice. America. America. No more serrated knife versus a tough, crusty loaf. Now the machine will do it for you. This is the greatest thing since sliced Was Was... Was that like band saws? Is that all that is? Is just like a bunch of band saw blades that they're just putting the bread through? That's what it looks like. Now, yeah, look, you can see right here. Those are band saw blades. Now the machine will do it for you. Yeah, right there. This is the greatest thing since <laughs> sliced bread. Oh, so that's where we're at. This is the greatest thing says America. And Europe was like, wait, yeah, we like machines too, but like not for bread. Slice this bread and you make your bread spoil faster. We don't need a machine for sliced bread. But the automatic slicer was just the beginning for America. No, I'm just getting warmed up. Now that we have sliced bread that, yes, spoils faster, let's make it, I don't know, not spoil as fast. One way to do this is to take the part of the wheat berry that has oils in it, the husk and the bran, and get rid of it. Focus on the big carb loaded berry in the middle. But there had to be a more industrial solution to make the bread last longer, to be whiter, to be softer. And Chemicals. It's the 1950s, and Europe is like, whoa, dude, America, chill out. Like, bread is just bread. We've been doing this for literally tens of thousands of years. Yeah. Just, like, stick to the program. Right. America's like, no. So America starts adding all of this stuff to their bread, bleaches and dough conditioners, and suddenly they're putting their bread into controlled chambers so that it will be hot enough to rise faster. And they're putting preservatives in so that their bread can now sit on a shelf for not just one or two days like it should, but four days, five days six days a whole week and it's still soft it is still white it yeah. is still spongy and delicious but it now has 15 ingredients instead of three and it's cheap and convenient and stable and america is loving this and europe is like whoa <laughs> you took this way too far this is not bread anymore and indeed wow yeah so it's it's like a whole different thing indeed i would argue that this is not bread anymore. This is a bread-like substance. It's a different product made from a different process, and yet we use the same word for it. And that's basically like the majority, like if you talk about bread in the United States, that's what you're talking about, it, is that fake replacement bread, you know what I mean? People do have regular bread. People make their own, and you can get fresh baked bread. Not as often, though. Very small portion of the population does that. Most people just get the winter bread or the sunbeam. If you want to know more about what's inside of this kind of bread, I was actually here making this video when I stumbled upon a video from one of my favorite YouTubers, Adam Ragusea, that's like a deep dive into all of the ingredients in this kind of industrial bread. I've seen that dude's channel. Yeah. I was actually here making this video when I stumbled upon a video from one of my favorite YouTubers, Adam Ragusea. That's yeah, this dude. I've seen some of his videos, guys. You should go check it out.
It's like a deep dive into all of the ingredients in this kind of industrial bread. Definitely go check it out. Some bread in the US has taken it so far that they will put in additives that keep it spongy and soft or that keep it really white. Even though these additives are known to like cause cancer and inflame asthma and <laughs> do all of these terrible things. Many of these additives that are legal to be put in American bread are literally illegal in Europe and many other countries. That's crazy. Azodicarbonamide is one of them. This is a whitening agent. But you know what? This product, ADA, also helps other things stay softer. So if that's an illegal ingredient, does that mean he has an illegal loaf of bread sitting there? Like that's not even legal to be in France at this point because there's a chemical in there that's banned? Interesting thought. Like yoga mats. ADA is in yoga stay softer. But this product, ADA, also helps other things stay softer. Like yoga mats. ADA is in yoga mats. We're eating the same thing. Wow. In yoga mats to make them spongy and soft. And it is banned in the EU and many other countries. Our wow. obsession with convenience, cheapness, softness, shelf life has led us down a really dangerous path. And yet we're totally okay with it somehow. This is why I think bread is a useful symbol for broader American culture. It shows us how far we are willing to go to prioritize things like cheapness and convenience over tried and true methods of, that have been baked into culture. Of course, industrialized bread exists here as well. It doesn't have some of the carcinogenic ingredients that are not allowed in the EU, but it still has all of the dough conditioners, bleaches, okay. still artificially risen, all of that. The difference is that it is rare. It is much more rare here. What is much more common is the ability to go to your local bakery and get bread that only has a few ingredients. And it's the ingredients that humans have been using for tens of thousands of years nice. to make this staple food. The feeling that I generally have is that this is how it should be. And then when I go elsewhere and you have other kinds of bread that, that last kind of bizarre amounts of time, you know, you're like, this is not really how it should be. You get calibrated to kind of this new standard here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it kind of ruins you. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out Paris is low key one of the most bikeable cities I've ever been in. But it used to not be like that. Like last time I was here, it was not this bikeable. I feel like there's some places in the Netherlands that would definitely take the crown on that. I smell some urban design policy changes afoot here. Someone tried to change this in the US a few years ago, a company called Panera. What could be better than a visit to Panera Bread? Tried to bring yeah. like European bread culture to the United States. I've seen Panera Breads, I've not been to one. They don't have one in my town. I've seen them when I was out and about in other places. In fact, I'm going to be here soon going out and about to some other places. And if I see one, maybe I'll stop there and get me some fresh bread if they still have them around. And they did. They had high quality, delicious bread. But what happens next is p potentially the best metaphor for America. Hello, I like money. They got a business loan so they could expand. And then they got investors and they started to expand and scale. And then they were purchased in a massive merger. And now they're planning to go public on the public stock exchanges, like they just became a massive corporation who does not focus on making quality artisan bread. Okay. Instead, they're now just a machine pumping out bread that kind of looks and feels like European bread, but is now done in a uniform, mass-produced, industrialized process, all in the name of scale and profit. Damn. Wow, they have it, canned bread. So the question is, why does this matter? Like, am I just being a snob who's like, traditional bread is better and therefore everyone should have it and I hate America. That was snobby, you're a snob. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not. Kind of, yeah. But also, it actually makes a difference in how it goes into your body. The beauty of bread always was that you could put this goop out in the air and bacteria would come down and start to feast on it and kind of start the digestion process. That is what natural fermentation does, is it starts to break down the wheat and make it ready to go into your body. The way okay. that we make bread in America doesn't really leave time for this. We use heat and chemicals to speed this process up, to make it rise faster, to make it rise bigger in an artificial, synthetic way. 
And so you're right. actually getting a much inferior product to what original bread making looks like and what it wow, produces. Man. Yes, it lasts longer. Yes, it tastes like chewy, pillowy, sugary heaven, but it's not bread the way that humans have been eating it for tens of thousands of years. Convenience, scale, independence, that is what we love in America. We love shelf life. We love industrialized efficiency. And I mean, in all fairness, it does make it nice, though. When you go a week later and you still have bread on your, you know, in the bag and it's not bad yet, it makes it convenient. But is it worth the health risks and the sacrificing of the quality? I, I don't know. But in those situations, it is nice to just have a quick thing of bread already sliced. It's convenient, but yeah, I don't know. If we love industrialized efficiency. And to me, yeah, all that stuff is super great because it means we get to live these wonderful, prosperous, convenient lives. But I think we lose something really big when we focus on those as the priorities as opposed to quality and community and culture. Last thing I'll say here is that this is slowly changing. You have a movement in the U.S. of people making some of the best bread in the world using the most traditional methods and ingredients. In these big cities, you have amazing bakeries doing okay, bread that is on par with anything you could get in Europe. And that kind of blows my mind. The problem is, and my critique, is that that is still so rare and specialty and really only available to people who live in big urban areas. Yeah. And meanwhile, the rest of us, the most accessible bread to us is this industrial, mass-produced garbage. Belongs in the trash! And that... <laughs> and what's somebody going to say if some Frenchman comes by and they see the, the loaf of Wonder Bread in the trash and they're like, where in the hell in the world did this get in here? Like, we don't even sell that here. Is enough to make me pretty frustrated. Yeah. I like this music, guys. While you're listening to it, go down, hit like, hit subscribe. You guys have a super fun, awesome day. Let me know about that bread situation over there. All right, take care.